Thank you so much for joining us today. We would love it if you would join us on your feed. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, here's God for me. Oh, here's love for me. Who the sun sets free, always free in thee. I'm a child.
every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
Aren't you glad God never stops working? I mean, seriously, you can go ahead and be seated. Uh, but this is a profound thought, like the idea that God is so busy daily, moment by moment in your life to continue to work out your salvation, to continue to see you grow in Him. Isn't that awesome? I love that song. Uh, okay, I said, isn't that awesome? Okay, I want to make sure, and I'm not the only one in the room that thinks that's awesome, because that's great. Um, anyway, if you don't know me, my name is Pastor Ryan. I'm one of the pastors here at New Life, and uh, today we have a, a phenomenal just experience in a store for you. But I know there are some new people in our room, and we love you. We love when new people come visit with us, and we want to clap for you, and we pray. Um, <laughs> We pray not only that you're welcomed, but that you, uh, you, you, you uh, feel the call of the Lord to say, man, I think New Life's going to be my home. I, I want to join this family that's pursuing the Lord together. And so, uh, you know, there's some ways we would love for you, if you are new here, to connect with us. Each of your chairs has what's called a connection card on it. Um, the most simple way for you to connect with us today is just to fill that out. Um, and you could drop that in uh, the buckets on the way out at each of the doors. But if you're new, if you take that to the guest table in the back, the welcome table, they will give you even a free gift to say, hey, thanks for coming. We are. We want to know you're here. We want to know when we have uh, new people, but also we want to know when our people are here. So please, everybody fill that out today, um, or you can just scan the QR code that you see on it. You, the one that's on our screen every week, you scan that and do that on the digital format. That's a, fun, a, a great way to do that as well. Um, that is also a way that you're going to be able to sign up for several things, including... Um, 
um, some of the hot happenings that's going on this summer. Even starting this week, we have our life camp starting, okay? Uh, so student ministries, middle school, and then our children's ministry starting on the 22nd. This is, uh, this, these are day camps that are going to be running here at the church throughout those weeks. There are various things happening, so they're specific to uh, one, my, one week will be sports, one week could be cooking. There's all kinds of different tracks that your kids can look at and take. So this is a great opportunity for you to invite people that you know are in middle school or children. Uh, maybe it's a neighbor kid or something like that, to invite them to be a part of that. I want you to, to consider that you can register on uh, the, the code that you're given there. You can, you can sign up for that. You can go to our website and register. You can certainly talk to Pastor Kyle, uh, who you'll see later today, or anyone else about those camps, but I want you to be aware of that. The other thing you could be signing up for on your connection card today is our next owner's class. And what we did is we decided we'll put that owner's class uh, in a later part of the day to help some people. So it's this is a 5 p.m. class. Um, it'll, it'll last about an hour and a half. For those of you that are new and you want to know what New Life's all about, you want to know how you can take ownership in being a part of who we are. It's our form of membership. It's our owner's class. And uh, so for you to fully get us and jump in, this is what you want to do. So if you know you're there, please sign up and let us know, and uh, we'll be looking forward to having you uh, at that class. Um, you know, each and every Sunday, we are given many opportunities to, to worship. I've seen some different uh, great worship happening around the church today. I've seen some different people praying for other people. I love that. Uh, you know, just worship the Lord in prayer together and, and greeting one another and, and loving one another and encouraging one another. Um, one of the tangible acts of worshiping our Lord, not only just serving one another, is, is our, our tithes and offerings. Each and every week we give to the Lord that which he's given to us. We give back to him. And so uh, if you have yet to set up your reoccurring gift online, you can do that. I know many of you already have. Or you could just do it each week, text it in, as you can see on the screen behind me. Um, or you can drop it in the black boxes on the doors on the way out. So obviously that is one of those super tangible ways that we give to the Lord each and every week. Um, and for those of you, I think it's so interesting, I was just thinking about this. Those of you that are viewing with us online, uh, many of you are on vacation right now. Isn't it cool that people are taking new life, they're on their vacations now? Um, so they're like at their beach house. And, and it, it, we've made it easy on every realm for you to keep continue to be faithful in that and every way else. And so please know that. Now, as we settle in uh, to today's message, we've got uh, something really amazing. I think Pastor Kyle did a phenomenal job, the first uh, one, and I think you're going to be really blessed. But we're starting off a new series called Re Restoration. Um, and how, how many of you believe, man, you're a work in progress, right? Uh, and, and, and just like any kind of project you run into, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. The scripture tells us that there are things that God has for us. And man, we are a work uh, he is doing. And, and sometimes we feel like a pretty you know, bad project, right? Um, but God is restoring us to what the, the, he, we were always intended to be in him. And today, Pastor Kyle is going to start us off in this series that's going to carry us through for the next four weeks. And I'm extremely excited to introduce this. And so we're going to do that by you guys just watching a video that will kind of give you an idea of this. So take a look at the screen.
did a great job on that video, as always. Um, yeah, give him some. So yeah, my name is Pastor Kyle. I'm the youth pastor here at New Life. I work with students 6th grade through 12th grade. And uh, as Pastor Ryan said, we are doing a brand new series that you guys get to be a part of called Restoration. And we thought that this would be a very fitting series to do right after the family series that we just finished. Uh, talking about families and getting excited about families. And we had uh, a great time at the park. Who was able to come to the park for the closing of that, that series? That was a great time, wasn't it? Pastor Jim told me afterwards that that was just the best service we've had all year, seeing everybody laugh and hang out with each other and just the fellowship that was going on, much, much needed. And it did come with uh, some bugs a little bit. You know, we took our, all of our sound equipment out there and brought it back. So there's things getting plugged in. I don't know if you saw Drew a couple times was beating on his drum, but nothing was really <laughs> coming out on some parts. Uh, but no, we've got a great worship team. We're able to put everything back together. But guys, we uh, wanted to do this series, Restoration, to let us know that there is no family too far gone that cannot be restored. No parent that is too far gone that cannot be restored. No child or teenager that is too far gone, too far out of the way that cannot be restored. That we serve a God who is in the restoration business. Amen? Anybody here been restored by God? Anybody here who's just a working progress? I know Pastor Ryan asked that earlier. Uh, if you're here for the first time and you didn't get to see, be a part of the family series and you're here for the first time today, you can be a part of this series by saying, here's what God can do in me. Here's what God can do in me. And so um, we have this, this restoration series because we're going to go through this together. Uh, how many fans of uh, American Pickers do we have in here? We have any American Pickers fan? I'm pretty sure I've seen every single episode. It's one of my favorite shows. In fact, you know, if I wasn't a pastor, I love being a pastor. I love being on staff at a church. I love my job, Pastor Jim. Uh, I love everything about youth ministry. But if I wasn't, I'm pretty sure I would go to American Pickers and see if they've got one extra seat left on that little bus that they drive around. Because I love everything about that show. The excitement that I would get going around and digging through people's attics and basements and old barns and old warehouses. And what they say in their introduction is that they are traveling the back roads of America uh, in search of rusty gold. And what they do is they take these items and they either restore it and sell it, or, or they take it just as it is. They kind of shake the dust out of it, and then they set it on a shelf and they sell it also. They, they love finding things that you can't buy in a store. They love finding the old original things. You know, they could do some remakes, but the old original things is what a lot of the people are after. And I just, I love the excitement. Some people uh, have been known to be called uh, somebody who's like a scavenger who goes around and like finds things. I have an area of my yard that Brooke calls like my little junkyard of things that I've got, little projects that I'm working on. Uh, but even, even though they have a passion uh, for old stuff, even though they have this, this great desire to find these things, they do have a limit of things that may not be restorable. They call these things roached, all right? They may be going through this old field and, uh, and they find this old like Tri-5 vehicle that could be worth tens of thousands of dollars if it was restored. And they, they get there, it's got weeds growing around it. They wipe off the, the window, they look in the window and there's no bottom half of the vehicle. Like the, the vehicle just like sinks a little bit every year because the rust has just completely eaten away. They would say that that car is roached. It's completely unrestorable. It is no value. It is worthless now. It's gone. It is past the point of restoration. They'll be walking around and they'll find like this old Indian motorcycle handle and it's like, man, I know exactly what that is. And they get excited, you know, they're licking their lips and they go and they, they pick this thing up and there's no bottom half of it because it's been roached. You know, they're crawling around the attic that, uh, and they're finding things that are roached, that the weather has got to, the sun has dried out and, and warped, the rain has rusted. The, things are past the point of restoration and they say, man, if we would have just got here sooner, I bring that up because our God does not look at us and say, man, if only you would have come to me just a little bit sooner. Aren't you glad that our God does not say, man, this person is roached, amen? Aren't you glad that we serve a God who always sees value in us, amen? Aren't you glad that we serve a God who said, me, you know what? You, you've gone too far in the wrong direction. There's nothing I can do here. 
Our God is in the restoration business. And our staff, whenever we were talking about this sermon series, we wanted to do something that we could all restore together, something that we could put together, something that we could restore from week to week to week to kind of give this message, to illustrate this point. And we started sitting around and talking about all the different things that we could st- restore. Do we have any HGTV fans in here? Anybody who's like, seen every episode of Fixer Upper and Good Bones and Flea, Flea, Flea Market Flip? You guys all seen those, right? All of you are like thinking about all the things that you've bought so that you could do that, but there it is still in the garage. You haven't even done it yet. You know, we were talking about all those things. Man, maybe we could get like a cool dresser. Maybe we could find like this old antique, sand it down up here. And uh, somebody had the idea, man, it'd be cool if we could just find like this cool old metal thing. And that's when we found this fridge. And you'll have to forgive a little of the theatrics that we have here, but there are some things that are not theatrical about this fridge that we found. It's it's in pretty rough condition, isn't it? I mean, you guys can't see it, but, I mean, there's like dust and rust. There's no plug on the other end. Uh, there's like this huge gouge in the metal. You know what? I'll just like turn in it so you guys can get the full effect. This thing is old. It says old school by Woody, 1945. <laughs> you guys can't see it, but I'm pretty sure there's like a little mouse carcass right here. Uh, there's just like a little pile of fur. There's no bones or anything, but it's in like this little shape like this. I'm pretty sure that a mouse died on that thing and the fur is what's left. It's, it's nasty. I mean, this thing is, is just old. It's, is this loose? Oh, we'll, fi- we'll fix this later. Uh. Hey, it does have the freezer option though. All right, that's exciting. This thing, uh, front row, you'll probably start getting some of this smell here in just a couple minutes. Um, I don't know if you can see some of this stuff, but every, every shelf has got some old gunk. It's got some old mold. Ah, oh, it's on my hands. Gross. This thing is in desperate need of some restoration. Nobody shake my hands after this. It won't. There, oh. Guys, we had to like move the junk off the top that had been buried. You guys saw me pull that sheet off and all that stuff came like right in my face. This thing is in desperate need of some restoration. But it is a perfect example, and this is why we wanted to bring this as an illustration to you, uh, because we are found. God, just like we went through this old barn, we found this old fridge, that is what Jesus does to us. He has found us. That is the point of salvation and the point of this sermon today. We, uh, we took it out of that location. We brought it up here to the church, and, and as we go throughout the series, we're going to clean this thing up. We're going to get some bleach and some water. We're going to wipe it down. We're going to uh, put some Bondo on all the gouges that it has. We're going to, to clean it up. We're going to prime it. And then finally, we're going to paint it. And this thing is going to look like a brand new creation when it's all said and done. And this is something that parallels the image of salvation when we are found by God. Uh, it's going to uh, parallel the, in, the, the picture of, of justification when we are found no longer guilty, uh, when we get to experience the work of God. It's going to parallel parallel sanctification, where we get to be set apart and growing in the likeness of Christ, and finally glorification, where we are finally set free from sin. We shed these earthly bodies. We get a new, fresh paint job up in heaven. That is the final destination of glorification. And this is going to be a great series because we get to be a part of this. We get to see ourselves in this nasty, dirty, old fridge. Isn't it gross? So gross. Before we open the scripture today, let's, let's pray. God, we love you. We love you so much. We thank you for this, this series. We thank you for this opportunity to, to look at your salvation and what you did for us on the cross. Uh, God, that you see us and you see value. God, we thank you that you are in the restoration business. God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can turn to Romans chapter 5.
And uh, over and over again, I want you to say this in your head just as we're, we're speaking today. What sin destroys, God restores. Y'all say that with me. What sin destroys, God restores. We can see that by simply looking at, at uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. You know, uh, God created the earth and everything on it. And he, at the end of it said it is good and was walking with Adam and, and fellowshipping with Adam and Eve. And then they, they uh, ate the fruit and sin entered the world, that God's design was good, sin destroyed it, and then God made a way for restoration through Jesus. And not just any restoration. I mean, to look at this, like God still picks us out. To look at this, we, we didn't necessarily just see what it is. We also saw what it could be, right? And that's what Jesus did. Even though sin destroyed it, God could still see who we could be in him. So uh, four common definitions of restore. One is to bring back something that was lost. Has anybody in here ever lost something? A cell phone, your car keys, maybe your kid, all right? Y'all have all lost something, and then you restore it to its rightful place, whether it's in your hand or in the car seat, wherever it may be. Uh, return someone or something to the former condition, place, or position, whether that's art or a vehicle that was going to be uh, restored or returned back to its original condition. Um, maybe you've uh, lost, uh, maybe you've been demoted in a job and you got restored. You got uh, returned back to that original position. Or repair, which means to, to renovate or return something to its original condition. Uh, we can open this up and bear the smell, all right? We can kind of see what the original color was, can't we? Kind of like this, I don't even know what you call that color. Someone from 1945, give me the answer. Mint green? I don't think they had mint back then. All right, uh, you know, to return, return something back to its uh, original condition. And then there's this one, restitution. Someone has to pay for restor uh, restoration when something has been broken, stolen, or defaced. Whether you break something that belongs to somebody and it cannot be put together, there's a payment that takes place that I'm going to replace this, right? And we can look at all those, keep those in your mind, because I want us to look here in Romans chapter 5, 6 through 11, and talk about what, does, uh, what do we need to be restored from? What does sin do to us? What is our condition that Romans chapter 5 describes us as? And what kind of people did Jesus come to restore? So let's look here in verse 6 of Romans chapter 5. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in, that while, uh, in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? Since we have now been justified by his blood, and how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now been recon uh, received reconciliation. Now, there's four uh, words that I want us to look at here that jumps out off, the, off of uh, these pages uh, to us. And the first one is powerless. First one is powerless. And there's something that comes to mind when I think of powerless. And I don't know if you guys think of this too, but uh, I got a, a picture off the internet of something that I feel is very powerless. All right. Uh, do we have any pug lovers in here? All right, the, you know, this one's for you. If, if, if we don't like pugs, then you guys are the stupid ones, right? For everybody else that's not a pug fan, uh, I found this one, the 2007 model of, of the American pug. Now, we could look at all the different dog species, all the different canines, and we can look at all of their specialties. That, that you can look at uh, all the things that they are able to do and things that we've been able to, to train them since they've been around. Uh, you look at the wolf and the coyote, they, you know, they hunt. They are a predator. They can actually catch their food. There are some dogs, some canines out there, like the beagle, uh, who simply uses their nose and barks as they are following a fresh, fresh track. Uh, their purpose is not to catch the animal. 
their, their purpose is just to, to bark as long as they are smelling a fresh track. Uh, some animals are designed to hunt using their eyes, like squirrel dogs. Some are used uh, to use their hearing. Uh, some dogs are, are simply for retrieving, like the, the uh, Labrador Retriever. They jump out into the water, they retrieve the drug, bring, bring it back. Then there's dogs that we use for, for war. There's dogs that we, you know, for smelling bombs. There's dogs that we use for police dogs. They have dogs that can tell you when you're about to have a heart attack or have high blood pressure. There's therapy dogs. Like we have trained dogs to do a lot of amazing things. And then we have the pug, right? They're not fast. Their ears are clogged up because they fold over. They're sense of smell. They've got fat that comes and covers their nose. Uh, terrible sense of smell. Uh, no sense of direction. Like, I just don't see these things as survivors, okay? I see them as a pretty powerless dog. And in fact, if there's ever an apocalypse, I'm pretty sure that these things are going to be the first thing to go because they just don't have what it takes to keep themselves alive. They are powerless, and we are not that different spiritually. We're not that different spiritually. In context, it means that we are unable. We are powerless. It has been possible for us to make ourselves right with God. We are powerless. The only way that we can uh, be, have that restored relationship with, with God is through Jesus. You look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That we are all have sin, and we all fall short of the glory of God, that there is a gap here that we are powerless to fulfill, that we are powerless to reach the goodness of God, and we need Jesus. It refers to this spiritual weakness that we have, this helplessness, that our sin prevents us from uh, getting to heaven without Jesus. And this requires that we admit that we admit our helplessness, that we admit that our sin separates us from God, and we ask God for salvation. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We are powerless. Sin destroyed our relationship with God, and Jesus restores it. What sin destroys, God restores. The second word I want us to look at is ungodly. And this is uh, who we are without Jesus. This is why we need restoration. And this understanding of, of us being the ungodly, who we are without Jesus, helps us understand the love of God, how deep and how wide it is. When it said that Christ died for us, that word for means he died in our place. He died in our place. Our human nature is bent away from loving God. Our human nature is bent away from respecting God and praising God. And that is a relationship that God wants so much so that he, he actually gave us uh, the great commandment to, to love God with all of your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all of your strength. But we are, were originally created for this design, and it doesn't make sense it would make sense that God would die, that Jesus would die for people who already loved him, right? We get that. that that's a level of love that we can understand. We can understand uh, when someone goes in and, and loses their life trying to rescue somebody, maybe from a, a car accident. Um, you know, we, we can understand that, but it's a little bit more difficult to understand why Jesus would die for people who don't already love him. People who would be considered enemies that we would later see at here in Scripture. The only thing that makes sense is that the love of Christ is so powerful that it is a whole other level of love that goes beyond our understanding to die for somebody who does not love you, to die for somebody uh, who, who is considered an enemy. That's another level of love, and that is our Jesus. Amen? Uh, the third one is sinners. 
All right, so we've got powerless, the ungodly. We've got this other word, sinners, in verse 8. We are people who miss the mark of God's holiness. That, that sin is anything that doesn't conform to the moral law or the character of God. It's the, the things that we do that we know we shouldn't. It's the things that we don't do that we know that we should. Right? It's not very difficult to know uh, what sin is because we kind of feel it. It's something that takes control of us completely, something that has totally uh, in and all through us. It's something that, that comes through uh, our mind, our soul, our intellect. It's something that we do willingly. It's something that we do accidentally. It's things that we do repeatedly. It is these sins that causes, uh, causes us uh, to, be, to have this separation between us and God. And see, this is in contrast that when we look at Jesus dying on the cross for sinners, uh, we have this contrast that, that, that Paul talks about in verse 7, where he says, you know, it is rare when someone dies for another. It's very rare. And when it does, we celebrate those people. We, we call those people heroes. When, uh, when uh, we have like a fireman who, who, who loses his life going into a building, or we have someone who, who's trying to rescue someone else, we celebrate those things. We put them on the news. But it's a completely different story when we have Jesus dying for the sinner. Where in verse 8, it was said, Jesus still died for us. And then the last one is enemies. Because we are sinners, we are enemies of God. Rather than our relationship being one of peace and love, sin causes us to be at war with God. We have rebelled against the king, and we stand opposed to his kingdom because of our sin. And the original sin of Adam was this refusal to, to believe in God and to trust in God. And every time we sin, it is a momentary moment of unbelief. Stay with me here. It's a momentary moment of unbelief. We have this need. We have this desire. There's something that is tempting us. And in that moment, we're saying the only way that we can fill this need— is to do something, is to fill it with something that's not Jesus. And in that moment, whatever that sin is, whatever that sin is, whatever is tempting us, we say, Jesus, you cannot fulfill this, and I need something else. A moment of unbelief that God is not capable uh, of, of filling us, a moment where God is not able to stand in that gap. Before we, God, we are not righteous, we are not good. And still Christ died for us. God did that so that, we, so that he could save us from that wrath. And so what? What now? What do we do with this, this information that we are sinners, that we are powerless, that we are uh, ungodly? What do we do with all this information? And the thing is, the people that we work with, the people that we go to school with, the people that are in our neighborhood, uh, that we meet from day to day, don't recognize this. They may not see themselves as a sinner because they don't see themselves as a sinner. They don't really see themselves at war with God. And they don't get to see who they are uh, without Jesus. And this ignorance means that people are ignoring Jesus and they're trying to, to find everything. They're trying to fulfill themselves with other things besides Jesus. And anytime we put something in front of God, what do we call that? We call it an idol. We call it an idol. People are walking around trying to find something else to fulfill them besides Jesus. And what does that mean for us? What, do, what is our role as a believer to do this? We have this refrigerator here, something that we're going to restore together. Our job is to make sure that people understand what Jesus wants to do with them. We, our job is to let people know that the love of Christ wants to restore them. But first, we need to make sure that we have a relationship with Christ, that we have admitted that we are a sinner. First, that we have to admit that that sin uh, has separated us from God, and we ask God to, to forgive us of those sins. And just like Romans 10, 9 says, to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and to put our faith in him. But we get to look at this picture of a fridge that Jesus takes us as is. You know, whenever we were walking around that barn and we were looking at all the, the things and we can look at this gouge, we can smell the smell, we can see the dirty rat up there. We knew what we were getting. And Jesus does too. 
Jesus knows what he's getting whenever he is calling you. And there's a lot of people uh, that I talk to that say, you know what, I'm just, I'm still working on me. And there's still some things that I have to get right before I can come to God. And that is not the picture that we wanted to show you. We didn't clean this up. We didn't spray paint it. We didn't get the mold off there. We didn't wipe the, the rat off. We left it as is to let you know that Jesus wants you just as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you where you're at. We took this fridge out of that barn and we brought it here. It would be almost impossible for us to restore that in its current location. We needed to bring it somewhere safe, somewhere that we could uh, get hands on it, somewhere that we could wipe this thing down and have access to it. But we got this fridge as is, and that's our Jesus. Our Jesus wants you just as you are. The, everything else is going to come later in the series. But we need to know, we need to let everybody know that Jesus is right here where we're at. Now, if you have a story like I did, uh, I came to Jesus and began my relationship with Christ whenever I was eight years old, all right? You could say that I was fresh out of the box, you know? I wasn't, how many terrible things do you really do when you're eight years old? You know, I, was, I probably hit my brother a few times with some random objects, uh, didn't clean my room, you know, some of those things. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in here and you feel like, you know, well, Kyle, I'm not that far from God. I'm not, I'm not that far. I haven't, I'm not that messy. I'm, it doesn't matter if it's an old fridge that's in a barn or one that's fresh out of the box. We still have one problem that needs to be restored, and that's our sin problem. That there's nobody here who is sinless, and it doesn't matter what, what route you took, and it doesn't matter if you got far away from God for a long time. It doesn't matter if you just kind of strayed a little bit. We are all in desperate need of restoration. And we could walk around this fridge, and we can pull up all the problems that it has, and we can point out all the details of the, here's the reason why I can't come to church. Here's the reason why God doesn't want me. That is not true. Our God is in the restoration business, and there is nobody too far, too far gone that cannot be restored. We must accept the cure. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, God made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us when he was on the cross, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We didn't just look at this fridge and say, man, what a mess. We looked at this fridge and we saw what it could be. We looked at this fridge and said, you know what? Yeah, it's in bad condition, but it doesn't have to stay that way. I think we can make this thing uh, into a completely new creation. And when God sees you, when God sees me, he doesn't see all of the little areas that we like to try to hide from God. God sees what we could be. He sees who we can be to become the righteousness of God. And maybe today you feel like this old fridge, like your story's got a, pretty, got a few rough spots. Maybe you feel like a fridge that's fresh out of the box where you're like, you know what, I, I didn't take too big of a route away from God. We all have a path. We all need to continue growing. Just like that song that we, read, uh, that we sang earlier, he never stops working. I love it. Now, I got to these four words, and I felt uh, during my sermon prep, and I felt like it was a little incomplete, that there was still something that I needed to bring into this and something that, that was kind of left hanging, and that was in the very last verse, verse 11, where it said, not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Let me read the definition of this reconciliation. Restoration of the favor of God to sinners that repent and put their trust in Jesus. This is the final piece of this salvation story, to know why we need restoration, what sin does to us, what we need to be restored from, and what we are being restored to, and that is the favor of God through our belief in Jesus. And there is nobody too far from God. 
And your job, our job here is to, one, make sure that we have that. Make sure that we have salvation. Next week, we're going to go another step into the process. Something is going to be different to the fridge next week. But this week, I want us to make sure that we have done step one, that we have been found in Jesus. And then you are to go out this week and every week, really, and make sure that other people know how to be found in Jesus, too. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for uh, just a, a simple, uh, God, illustration of a refrigerator that, uh, God, is nasty, that needs work, that needs to be restored, uh, God. And I thank you that we're able to look at that and see, um, God, what you can do in the life of somebody who comes to you. God, I thank you personally for what you've done in my life. I thank you for the stories that are in these seats here these, this week. And God, as we continue in this, this series, God, I pray that, that people grow, that people find uh, where they are in this process and see where they need to go to you and what you are calling them to do, what you are calling them uh, to clean up, what you are calling them to, uh, to this process of restoration. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There is one more thing I want to do before I turn it over to the worship team. I need to introduce you to someone else. Her name is Lacey. Get out here, Lacey. Come on in, Lacey. Lacey is our intern for the summer, and Lacey has hit the ground absolutely running. She has been hanging out with some of our, our students from, from Lifelike. She's been hanging out with the middle schoolers, with the high schoolers. She's been taking them to eat, taking them shopping for all of our camps that we've been doing, and they just love her. She joined uh, our softball team and was able to hit the ball farther than some of the guys that are on our softball team. I don't think they were ready for, for some of that, but why don't you introduce yourself? a little bit. Yes, so I'm Lacey. I'm from Bentonville, Arkansas, and that's City, Arkansas, also known as Walmartville. So that's why I don't have a country accent, if you were wondering. Right. Um, <laughs> she doesn't have a country accent. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Um, but I'm current. I will be a senior at Washita Baptist University. It's about an hour south of Little Rock, and I'm studying Christian studies um, to go into pastoral ministry or maybe... Um, educating high school students on what Christianity is and what different realms they could go into and just opening the door for them. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be here this summer. Um, I've already done a lot and there's a lot to do and I'm excited for all of the little projects I have. Yep, we have a lot of things. Y'all give it up for Lacey. We have a lot of things that we're going to be putting her to uh, work in, but she's going to be, you know, a huge help at our, our life camps that we're doing this summer, going to camp with us, and she's very thankful for the opportunity to serve with us, and I want you guys to all, uh, in fact, I'm going to give her a jar of Skittles, and I want each of you to come get a Skittle and invite her to dinner sometime throughout this summer, all right? So go give people uh, Skittles, and then you guys invite her over to your houses for dinner. Worship team.
you so much for joining us. It was so great to see you. We hope to see you again next week.